Chad Eastie Show, News Talk, KFYO. Thank you very much for tuning in today. We go to the phones. Our next guest, Republican strategist, Matt Makoviak, here on the Chad Eastie Show. Matt, good morning. How are you today? Good morning, Chad. Doing great. How about you? Doing great. Uh, man, there's a lot to get to uh, today. Uh, let's talk about uh, the news that is continuing uh, to come out this morning. The uh, House apparently uh, will send the impeachment articles uh, to the Senate, or at least the uh, vote is expected tomorrow uh, now. Wh- what, does that, what does that mean, and why does the House even have to vote uh, to send these, uh, th- these articles over to the Senate? Well, they have to formally appoint the um, impeachment managers on behalf of the House of Representatives, uh, you know, who those people are, how many of them there are. So it's really just a process uh, you know, issue at this point. They've already voted to impeach the president on two articles, uh, but the Constitution states that they have to take this additional step, and for whatever reason, the Speaker has been playing some kind of game that makes sense only in her mind, uh, delaying this now, I think, for 25 days, um, you know, trying to exact uh, concessions from the Senate and getting none. So um, the expectation is that she, uh, this morning, is is going to detail to the House Democratic Conference who the managers will be and um, the timeline. It sounds like they're going to vote tomorrow. So the Senate will receive them Wednesday. Uh, they do have a long holiday weekend because of the uh, President's Day holiday on Monday. So uh, you may see some sort of procedural uh, aspects of the Senate trial begin uh, as, as early as, as Wednesday or even Thursday. Uh, but you'll see a couple days, probably Sunday and Monday, would be vacation or you know, would, would be inter- you know, interruptions to the Senate trial. But I think the Senate trial will be underway next week, and it'll go on for you know, 10, 10 days, two weeks perhaps. And then at the end of that, they'll have a vote on witnesses, and that's when it'll get interesting. You, you've got a, a handful of senators right now who are running for president, and uh, they, in theory, they're going to be involved, uh, right, in, in the impeachment uh, trial. What are the rules for this? Do, do they have to be? Do they have to be in, in D.C.? Uh, what what goes on with with those candidates? Yeah, so if we're if we're using the Clinton trial as a model, which is the expectation, the expectation is that Leader McConnell will, will quite literally uh, put the exact same rules package together, same amount of time. Uh, I want to say it's fifteen or sixteen hours uh, of uh, arguments by both sides, and then I think it's eight hours of questions by senators uh, in the initial phase. Uh, but the understanding is that that all 100 senators are required, are li- quite literally required, to be there for the entirety of the trial. You know, if you're a juror in a trial, you can't just leave because right. you want to go somewhere else. Um, you know, the bailiff is there to go find you and track you down. Um, I believe it's actually illegal to leave. And I don't. This isn't a criminal trial, so there are some differences. But but no, I mean, I, I think honestly, I think it would be disqualifying for for an individual U.S. senator to not be there. And and no one has said. That that's going to happen. Uh, you did have one of the five Democratic U.S. senators drop out, Cory Booker, uh, yesterday. So there are four left who are still in the United States Senate, still running for president: Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Amy Klobuchar, and, and for reasons no one can understand, Michael Bennett uh, <laughs> of Colorado, who's making a play in New Hampshire. So uh, those four senators will be there. And so, look, I mean, the Pelosi gambit makes no sense to me, uh, except in two possible ways. Uh, one, she may be trying to protect uh, this debate, the CNN debate in Iowa tonight. She, she, she may not have wanted to transmit the articles on the belief that McConnell could have started the trial and threatened uh, that, that debate. That seems pretty small, but it, it's, it's certainly an issue. The fact that they're voting the day after the debate raises that question. I think the bigger um, kind of conspiracy theory uh, is that she wants to disadvantage Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, and she wants to advantage someone like Joe Biden, who she thinks is a stronger candidate who will help Democrats hold their majority in the House. Because just from, a, from an impeachment strategy standpoint, nothing she's done makes any sense. And not only did she not get what she wants, uh, she actually weakened her own case for impeachment. Well, and and I mean, that would, in a way, that would make sense. I, I mean, Nancy Pelosi, I think that uh, just, you know, reading between the lines of some of her interviews, Matt, uh, you know, she hasn't come out and endorsed anyone, but I, I don't believe that she thinks a, a, especially a Bernie Sanders, can win this thing. Uh, you know, on on a national level, 
I think she probably does lean towards Joe Biden. Uh, what would be the downside, if you're the Republicans at least, what would be the downside of, of stretching this thing out to where you don't have Bernie Sanders on the campaign trail? You don't have Elizabeth Warren on the campaign trail, and you, you, you put a real dent in, into what they're doing. Well, look, I mean, I think the question is whether the trial is going to have witnesses or not. And that's really the only question right now. And it would just take four Republican U.S. senators to join with all 47 Democrats to, 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 to vote uh, to call a witness. So the question is, you know, the Democrats are obviously going to try to get Bolton to testify. Presumably they'll try to get White House Chief of Staff uh, Mick Mulvaney to testify. There may be a couple others, perhaps Rudy Giuliani. Um, it sounds like, you know, the Republicans are going to then require, you know, votes on people like Hunter Biden uh, and maybe Joe Biden. And who knows, maybe the whistleblower. So, you know, do, the, the first question is, do the Democrats want that? I mean, do they want to open up their front runner to having either him directly testify or the, or the son testify? Um, in terms of stretching it out, um, look, I think that Senate Republicans have basically decided a short trial is in their best interest. Um, new witnesses, uh, you know, mean new, mean new information, means new variables. Uh, you know, the, they, Republicans feel like we're in a good, a good spot on impeachment. The public is not there in terms of, the, of, of public opinion. Um, the Democrats look desperate and partisan, and they continue to push this, even though it's, it just hasn't really made much sense politically, and they haven't made the sale to the public. So, you know, we'll see. Um, you know, my, my hope is that all, all senators will wait until both sides present their case. Uh, and then they can decide whether additional witnesses are necessary. You know, you don't <laughs> – a judge doesn't rule on evidence and witnesses before opening arguments. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, and that's basically what the Democrats or what Pelosi were demanding, and that was ridiculous, and that's why she didn't ultimately get what she wanted. Uh, Matt, we had a uh, caller who wanted uh, wanted me to ask you, and, and then this has been something that has – uh, been debated, uh, why the Senate leadership just doesn't simply vote to dismiss impeachment, denying the whole issue credibility. Yeah, and, and that's, at least at least as of yesterday, that's what the president uh, appears to appears to um, prefer. Look, there there is some political risk here for Republicans. You know, if they're not seen as, if, if they're seen as sort of, you know, not taking their constitutional responsibility seriously, there could be some risk for some of these potentially vulnerable Republican senators like Cory Gardner in Colorado, Susan Collins, uh, you know, in Maine, uh, a couple others who are potentially at risk in North Carolina and Iowa. So th this is the trick, right? You have to show that you're serious, that you're sober, that you're taking your constitutional responsibilities seriously. But ultimately, I don't expect even one U.S. senator to ultimate a Republican U.S. senator to vote to, to remove the president from office. So they're all going to be making their own calculation about how far they go. You know, do they want Bolton? Do they want witnesses at all? You know, all, all those kinds of things. My guess is if there were 51 votes to dismiss uh, the impeachment trial uh, without, um, without even hearing it, without even considering it, my guess is they would do it. I don't think, there are, I don't think the votes are there for that. Uh, so I think you are going to actually proceed to the, to the impeachment, uh, tr you know, to the Senate trial, uh, and it will go through this initial phase, and then they'll see if there are 51 votes for witnesses or not. Matt, uh, tonight we have another Democrat debate. I think this is the final one before the Iowa caucuses. Uh, things got turned, uh, the heat got turned up a little bit yesterday when I think it's yeah. quite obvious the Warren campaign leaked this uh, private meeting between her and Bernie back in 2018, where Bernie allegedly uh, said a woman can't win the presidency in 2020. Bernie campaign is denying that. Some people to the Washington Post are denying uh, that that happened. Obviously, this is going to come up tonight. What do you anticipate happening uh, in tonight's debate? Is this going to be all out war on stage tonight? Yeah, it's, you know, it's interesting because the two, those two campaigns basically had a kind of a, a peace, a peace agreement that was reported in the New York Times a few weeks ago, you know, that they both were going to stay in for a while. They, they knew that they each had some overlapping support, but they didn't want to, you know, destroy the other one to try to, to get ahead. Warren has been in a more desperate situation in the last few weeks. Her polls, you know, poll numbers really peaked, and she's come down to earth. Her fundraising's down a little bit. She's just not the candidate of momentum anymore, and she's at real risk. If she doesn't do really well in Iowa, she's probably not going to do well in New Hampshire. And if that happens, she's going to have a really tough time ultimately being the nominee. So, yeah, they made a fairly desperate decision to leak this. Whether it's accurate or not, I think, is a huge question. And you're going to, you know, quite literally have a he said, she said, where she says he said it and he says he didn't. And so it's going to be a question of credibility. This goes back to, you know, the, the, one of the central issues Warren's had from the beginning. And, you know, I know a lot of people 
uh, laugh about the Native American thing, but that's an issue of credibility as much as anything else. Um, and so she may she may end up uh, paying the price for that. Bernie Sanders is a lot of things, but he's not dishonest. Um, you know, he he says what he believes. He defends it. He doesn't run from it. He doesn't pretend. Um, and so it, it would be very hard for me to believe that if you if you true of a male candidate running for president truly believed a woman could not win, that he would tell a woman that who is running. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't seem to make much sense. So, yeah, I think it's going to come up. I think it may be the first thing that comes up tonight. We'll see. Uh, and, of course, the president is going to do his own rally in Milwaukee at the same time. So for your listeners out there that simply cannot bear another Democratic debate, <laughs> you can uh, tune into Fox News or C-SPAN and watch it. I've, I've got to give the Trump campaign credit because that not only are they doing that, but I, I believe, aren't they doing a, another rally in Iowa a couple of days before? Days for the caucuses, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I mean, it just it, it's wonderful. Yeah, you know, it's another example of the kind of thing that only Trump would do. Right. I mean, there's kind of like this unwritten rule that when the other side is doing a presidential debate, you know, you sort of stand down. Right. You're not uh, particularly if you have the White House, you let them have the spotlight, you let them debate. Look, I mean, on the one hand, I mean, you know, these candidates may be saying things that make it difficult for them to be elected president. So we do want you know, the attention of the country and all this stuff. But um, I think for Trump, it's about, you know, wanting to give his base something to watch. Um, he doesn't want to see the spotlight to them. And that's what this is about. And so it is a very unique tactic. He uses these rallies as much about earned media as he does for collecting data. For every one of these rallies that has fifteen or 20,000 people, they're collecting uh, data on 100 or 200,000 people, email addresses, cell phone numbers. These are, these are future volunteers, future small-dollar donors. It's very, very valuable information. Absolutely. Matt, tell folks uh, how they can sign up for your newsletter and also your podcast. Yeah, the newsletter, which I know you subscribe to and more than 3,000 Texans do, is called Must Read Texas. We take all the top news from around the state, put it in one clean, easy-to-read email, and deliver by 9 a.m. every weekday morning. You can sign up for a free one-week trial at mustreadtexas.com. The podcast is called Mac on Politics. It's available in the iTunes Store, uh, on Google Play, on Stitcher, on Spotify, and at maconpoliticspodcast.com. Most recent episode is from Washington, D.C. I interviewed uh, a current uh, freshman United States Senator from Indiana, Mike Braun, talked about impeachment, Iran, the economy, trade, all kinds of issues. So definitely check that out. Very good. Uh, Matt, as always, appreciate your time. We'll talk to you next week. Take care, Chad. That's Matt McCoviak, Republican strategist here on the Chad Eastie Show.